The gifted cousin duo of Stephen and Rabia Mel makes a triumphant return to an exciting sci-fi world in Netflix's Code 8 Part 2. The movie continues where the first one left off a few years later and tells the story of what happened to the major protagonists. At the end of Code 8, Rabia Mel's character, Connor Reed, went on the run following his involvement in an incident that claimed the lives of two police officers. The activities of Amel's character after serving years in prison are the main subject of Code 8, Part 2. In the science fiction follow-up, Garrett Kelton, Stephen Amel, who is succeeding in life after taking control of Lincoln City's drug trade at the end of the previous film, and Connor's worlds collide once more. In order to accomplish this, Code 8, Part 2 introduces 14-year-old Pav, Serena Gulangas, into both of their lives. The adolescent girl is present for an incident that launches the film and utterly destroys Connor's plan to keep out of trouble. In Code 8, the police use humanoid robots called Guardians and Drones to maintain control over the powers, the franchise's disadvantaged, superpowered group. While the robots and drones in the first movie were impressive, Code 8, Part 2 improves upon them in every aspect. A side-by-side -side comparison demonstrates just how far the sci-fi aspects of the franchise have advanced. The new robotic K-9 that the Lincoln City Police Department uses in the sequel, known as The Guardians, look amazing and add energetic action sequences to the picture. One particularly suspenseful scene occurs early in the movie. Cody Part 2 opens with Connor leaving prison, turning down Garrett's assistance, and starting again as a community center janitor. He must resort to Garrett for assistance when he comes across 14-year-old Pavani, who is escaping from corrupt cops who are pursuing her life. Regarding his psych drug trafficking, which he manages out of the Monument Hill Towers apartment building, Garrett has his own purpose. He also gives a portion to the crooked Sergeant Kingston to maintain his drugs business. He wavers a few times before deciding to support Pavani and Connor in their attempt to overthrow Kingston. Connor and Pavani resume their regular lives, and he is sentenced to prison. Five years have passed since the events of Code 8 Part 1's events. Connor serves his sentence and is released from prison. Soon after, Garrett welcomes him and asks if he can join or ask for anything, including to go to prison for him. Connor is concise in his rejection of the offer, though. Working as a janitor at a community center, he makes a decent wage and stays out of trouble. His mother's friend Minna is the only person he knows. The youngest candidate vying to become union president is Sergeant Kingston. He is leading the new Guardians program, which has resulted in the deployment of robotic dogs across Lincoln City. The public's clamor for police reform and the abolition of the violent guardians is meant to be addressed by these canine robot canines. The robotic canines are designed to deal with offenders in a way that eliminates deaths without resorting to lethal force. But Kingston, or King, as he is affectionately called, is a prime illustration of the institutionalized corruption inside the police department. He has cultivated relationships everywhere and begged for favors from influential individuals. Above all, he has made agreements with Garrett and accepts a sizable fee in exchange for letting him carry on with his drug trafficking. Regarding the canines, he makes sure the robotic canines are capable of killing any time he sees fit by using his dishonest departmental colleagues. After seeing his corruption, Tarek gives the order for his soldiers to attack him with the canine. In the end, Tarek is cornered and fatally injected with a lethal dose of psych by a dog outside his apartment building. 14-year-old Pavani, a PWP, People with Power, lives alone with her brother Tarek. She is a straight-a student but she needs new books in order to get admitted to a special program. Tarek needs money to acquire her those books, yet in his line of work, earning money is difficult and dangerous. In an attempt to make more money and better support his sister Tarek, a POP who also runs bags for Garrett, wants to do more. When Garrett declines to endorse Tarek quite yet, his desperation increases. Tarek eventually follows Garrett's men to the location of the drop, where they steal King's bribe money. But when King and his soldiers show up, Tarek flees after being unable to conceal from them. He is eventually killed by a K-9, which Pavani sees happen. King, who's watching a live feed from the K-9, orders to contend with the girl too, but the live connection with the dog inexplicably severs when he lunges at Pavani. This is because, as some later come to understand, is because of her powers, which she can use to manipulate technology. She runs away and hides inside a tool shed at the Lincoln City Community Center. Connor finds her and takes her in after Mina advises he take her somewhere safe. King's men are constantly on the alert as the cameras film Connor and Pat together. 
At some point, Connor has no choice but to approach Garrett and return the favor. But Garrett already has plans of his own. King met with Garrett as soon as he found out about Connor and told him about Pav and Connor, as well as the fact that he needed the girl since she is a witness and witnesses speak. King cannot afford for the truth to be out and for his campaign to be jeopardized. When Garrett finds out about Pav, he sees an opening. When Garrett first meets Connor, he informs him that Pav will be working for him at the Towers since, as a transducer, her abilities can be very useful to his line of business. Pav wants to forget what she saw, but Garrett also needs Connor to feel helpless. He erases her memories with one of his POPP, but Connor frees Pav and uses his powers to escape with her before they begin to delete all of her memories with her brother. Garrett's men and King's guardians ambush Connor and Pav, who are helped by Mina, who sacrifices herself to save them. An injured Garrett joins Connor and Pav to escape the attack from King, who decides to go after him after seeing Garrett not following the deal and killing Pav and Connor. Garrett, Connor, and Pav join hands to go steal video evidence from one of the canine dogs that King has in his home. They manage to steal the canine's head and take it to Garrett's headquarters at the towers. But rather than taking information out of it, Garrett chooses to hold onto it as a weapon against King. King rejects his offer and the threats he makes in an attempt to coerce and intimidate him with it. Garrett is left handcuffed outside the building after he stabs him. In the pivotal scene of Cody Part 2, Connor and Pab choose to fight their way out of the building after stealing Garrett's men's heads. In order to combat the canine dogs, Pav employs her abilities. One of the dogs injects Connor with a large amount of psych before she gains control of it. Pav is carried outside by a staggering Connor, where they are met by automobiles and police officers. A journalist and her cameraman are spotted by Pav. She makes a call to them in order to transmit the information from the K-9 head to the general public by touching the camera and streaming a live feed. Even Connor and Pav attempt to halt, as do Kingston and his soldiers, but Davis stops them and Garrett also uses his talents to stop them. At the conclusion of Cody Part 2, King is caught and detained as the truth is made public through the news. After three months, Connor resumes his regular routine and his work as a janitor at the Lincoln City Community Center, where Pav also visits and finds happiness in his newfound lifestyle. The Attorney General is looking into the K-9 program in great detail and feels that there is yet more misconduct there. The City Council is expected to approve a bill that limits the use of police robotics on Monument Hill and releases millions of dollars into the neighborhood in an attempt to assist those impacted by this crime. On the other hand, some individuals oppose this bill, citing recent claims of a surge in psych immigration to Lincoln City from unidentified sources. Cody Part 2 subtly suggests that this unidentified source is none other than Garrett, who, while sitting in front of the prison TV, smiles at the news of the surge in psych intake. 